Well, good morning and welcome to your Sunday Gardener. I'm John Collins along with Carrie Engel good morning. from Valley View Farms. Carrie, we were in this location maybe two months ago showing off the start of a, a side, I call it a sidewalk garden. Yep. Where we had some plants put in along either side of a sidewalk. Well, it's all grown up now. I, I know, and it's been remarkable. Um, Pat takes care of this garden. She actually planted it. It was Andy Ford's idea, uh, but it really is great because it really lets us see how the plants we sell really do in a real setting. What I usually tell people is that perennials don't do a whole heck of a lot that first year. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, I'm wrong. These really took <laughs> off. Well, it's a very sunny location, at least for the uh, first part of the day. And uh, they're thriving. And what I kind of like about it, and I've got an element of this in my own yard, it's, I, I call it a hodgepodge. I mean, there's just kind of, it's helter skelter. But once everything comes out, it's gorgeous. And what's nice about it is you, you notice something new every time you come yeah. look at it. So the first thing you notice coming in here were the beautiful zinnias. I love this. Um, Verbena venariensis, I think it's mm -hmm. called. Um, but the pollinators love this garden too. So they're here. Bees are here. We see butterflies here. We see hummingbirds here and birds. And what to me is amazing is, unlike my hodgepodge garden, you don't have any weeds. Well, there's a couple reasons. <laughs> uh, we did not put down a weed preventer this year. We might do it next year. Um, but a lot of it, the garden is so full, there's not that much room for weeds to grow. Get started, right. And, and Pat's been taking care of this garden. She Get comes up here at least once or twice a week and just picks everything out. Or as we walk by, if you see something, you just pull it out. Just find a space where the bees are, too. I, I don't want to get too close because a lot of bees in here right now. They love it. But hummingbirds and butterflies, too. Hummingbirds and butterflies. And a lot of these plants are great for them. This What's is some a, of the others? Uh, well, this isn't the mint family. This is a type of agastache or hyssop. It'll also be called. Mm -hmm. um, snapdragons are wonderful. These are usually better in cool temperatures. So they're right. going to give you more color in, like, April, May, and then again, September, October. But you can see they look beautiful here. Um, back behind here, I don't know if you can see this all that well. But this has been a plant. This was in bloom the first time we came out here. This is digiplexus. So is it like a digitalis type? It's very similar. Yeah. It's not necessarily hardy. So uh, we sell it in our perennial area, but I wouldn't count on it. Um, but that hasn't stopped blooming, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Some of the asters are starting to bloom here. Um, zinnias, these are great just to add pops of color here and there. And so many different yeah. colors you can choose what from. What do you do with zinnias to keep them from getting? I guess they get a, like a fungus and they begin to look a little ratty once things get hot. A lot of them get powdery mildew. Yeah. Look for the perfusion varieties. Don't get them as much. And one called Zahara doesn't as much. Uh, make sure you have some space and good air movement out here because I think there's lawn on either side. It does get some good air movement. Mm -hmm. And if you have to, you can spray them with a fungicide. Right, to keep them but green. But that'll certainly and help. Not looking like they're Absolutely. Uh, at the end of their, their life. But I guess the key is varieties uh, all jump jumbled together, really, it does work. It really does work, and there's a lot of heights. Uh, mm -hmm. If we come back over here, you can even see dill. And this is great. The, um, it's, it's texture. It's not color as much as uh, texture in the garden. And, and again, the larva for butterflies, absolutely love this. I have it all over mine at home, really? that and the parsley. Okay. So it's really wonderful for that. And, and colors, you've got a whole variety of colors. There's no particular scheme. I see orange. I see pink, purple, you know. And as you get close, there's also some wonderful scents. This is pineapple sage. This is going to bloom. So you've got herbs later in there yet. too. All sorts of things. Oh yeah. So it's Very a nice, nice fragrant garden. So you can take, you know, come out here, just just cut some of these gardens, cut some of the flowers, put them in a nice I vase. I see you're ready to do that. I'm ready to right. do that. Right. I know. I just love some of these things. And this will keep going right up to frost, right? They will. And um, there's, you know, there's no problem with it. You can certainly take these, put them in a vase, and early morning's a great time to do all that with your flowers. Or the weatherman might use it as a boutonniere. There you go, weatherman. Yeah. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all, right. all right, so a hodgepodge garden right along a sidewalk. A beautiful idea. Something maybe you should establish for your garden for next year. Think about it. Put some bulbs in there first. Start there with you some go. bulbs. All right, Carrie, next Sunday we'll be back with more on Sunday Gardener. We'll see you then. And if you have a garden question, just send it to Sunday Gardener, WBAL TV, 3800 Hooper Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21211. You can also go to our website, WBALTV.com.